So the other day, IGN reported that Nintendo would not be participating in this year's E3, and while this isn't confirmed by Nintendo or E3, the ESA, I wanted to talk about it because I think I saw a lot of people that were really disappointed in this because that most likely means there won't be a Nintendo Direct in June. I actually think this isn't a bad thing. Let's talk about it. Hello there everyone, welcome to the channel, my name is Botox Games. If you are new here, please consider subscribing for all things Nintendo and collecting related. Today I wanted to talk about this E3 business, I'm a couple days late, but I wanted to cover it anyway. People seem really disappointed because this to them means there won't be any Nintendo news over the summer and, you know, we're going to have this drought. And I've seen a lot of people even speculating that this means there just isn't that many games releasing in 2023. I understand the concern, and as someone who has been heavily in the Nintendo hype, hype beast circle for the better part of a decade now, um, I get being upset that there's not going to be a Direct, most likely, but after what happened in 2022, I can't really agree that I'm sad. You know, obviously, yeah, it's nice on E3 day, having a Direct, having your Xbox Showcase, having your PlayStation Showcase, and just having everything at once. But after 2022 and how Nintendo handled their marketing over the summer, I really can't say I'm upset. Every single week in summer last year, there was something. There might be like one or two weeks where there was like nothing or a little announcement, but I was covering all of these things weekly, and I remember just thinking this was a lot of fun. You never knew what was coming. And it wasn't, it wasn't just completely out of nowhere like 2020 was. 2020 was a prime example of bad. That was, you know, May May 15th or whatever. You wake up on a random day and Paper Mario the Origami King is announced. And then three months later, there's a Super Mario 35th Direct that was just posted with no, no lead up other than people kind of leaking it. And 2022, well, first of all... The, the issue with 2020 was also that there was no games. In 2022, there was already a full slate of games, and we kind of knew what was coming, with a few exceptions, but we got directs focused on specific games. We got a partner showcase that was not tied to E3. We got um, a new Switch OLED announced, you know, special edition console, which was a lot of fun to talk about because everybody was like, oh, no, there's no Switch Pro this year, which obviously. We got a new Kirby game announced on Twitter. We got Bayonetta trailer and release date on Twitter. This all happened in the span of like two months last summer, and it was awesome. And then it all capped off at the end of September, the end of summer, with an actual Nintendo Direct leading up to TGS. And these announcements weren't random. We never knew what the announcement was going to be. But after it happened three times, it wasn't just a coincidence. It was clear Nintendo was dumping their marketing every week throughout the summer. So every Tuesday, every Thursday, I knew something was going to be announced, and I knew to check my phone when I woke up in the morning. For me, that was really exciting. I don't know about you all, and I know I'm going to get a lot of people disagreeing with me, but having a balance of directs in February and September and then the summer just being announcement zone was honestly really nice. And I won't disagree that Nintendo not being at E3 is a little disappointing. Um, the reality is they haven't actually been there in a long time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but 2021's E3, where they announced Metroid Dread, that was all digital, I'm pretty sure, right? There was no actual show floor. So Nintendo wasn't really there. And then before that, what, it was 2019? So it's already been years, and I know that's because of COVID, but E3 as a as a place, as a physical location, has pretty much been dead for already four or five years. Sony and Microsoft have been dropped out for a while now. And just because Nintendo won't be at the actual E3, you know, convention center in Los Angeles... It doesn't mean they won't have announcements around that time. We, Like I said, we saw it last year, man. The end of June, they had that partner showcase, which, you know, say what, what you will, you know, there wasn't that many, um, there wasn't any first party announcements. I think they showed three hopes in that. It was a really good partner showcase. They announced a lot of really cool stuff, which was then followed by a Xenoblade Direct and, you know, the Splatoon OLED and Bayonetta 3 trailer and Kirby's Dream Buffet leading into the end of summer with the September Direct. So, for me, I think they could have done a, a regular June Nintendo Direct. I think they could have easily gotten away with that, showing uh, maybe they, maybe if they announced, you know, Fire Emblem Engage a little bit earlier, maybe if they, you know, had that Bayonetta trailer in there, that Splatoon OLED model, they could have maybe truncated the Xenoblade Direct into a, you know, 10-minute showcase in a regular Direct. All of these things. It was a deliberate choice, and I'm guessing it probably worked for them. So while yes, once again, I agree it's nice having all of the big companies show all their games at once in one week in the middle of June, I don't think this means we're not getting 
games this year or announcements. I just think it'll be presented a little differently. And, you know, with the way the internet is now, I sound like an old man saying that, you know, having just three Nintendo Directs, it works and we all love it, but you got to dominate the conversation. By having a Direct in February, which is what we're assuming will happen this year, and it's happened the past, like, four years, and then having a Direct in September, you kind of open up the year strong and more or less end the year strong because the holiday season happens after September, and then, you know, they don't really need to announce much. But then in that middle period, that's when you really want to extend the conversation. By just having a June Direct and then September, there, there's three months of just, like, nothing, right? I also think it worked in 2022 as well, and this would apply to most years for the Switch so far, it worked because there were so many games to play. Maybe you didn't like them, but I mean, June, July, and September were packed for the Switch. Two games a month, which is crazy. I guess September only had Splatoon, but you get what I'm saying. But yeah, I just keep seeing people say that, oh, this is disappointing. Nintendo has nothing to show. They're leaving E3. I don't, I can't say I agree, you know? I, maybe it's not necessarily a good thing, like I put in the title. I'm personally into it. Maybe that's more from the content creation aspect because there's something every week to talk about. But yeah, man, we're still going to get whatever they were going to announce, we're going to get. People seem to think that because a Direct is scheduled, that Nintendo is just going to manifest these awesome new trailers for us to see. Guys, if the games aren't ready to show, they're not ready to show. We've had bad E3 Directs before. We've had a lot of them. I look back fondly at E3 2017. <laughs> that E3 was horrible. All we got were pending titles for Kirby and Yoshi, a Metroid Prime 4 JPEG, and the Pokemon dude sitting at his desk saying, yeah, we're making Pokemon for the Switch. Sometimes these things aren't ready. And rushing these announcements isn't a good thing. Nintendo has really, really hit a good spot and kind of delivered on their promise that even Reggie was talking about years ago where they don't announce games too early. A fantastic recent example of this is Fire Emblem Engage. I mean, this is a core mainline Fire Emblem game, a big deal for the company. It was announced in September and released in January. That's awesome. And we're going to see more and more of that as Nintendo keeps going, as they keep, you know, their, their lips tight, as they don't announce things way too early. I think that 2017 Direct probably scarred them a little bit because now they have to make this Metroid Prime game that they probably kind of wanted to cancel. By not being constrained to the E3 as a time frame, I think it's good for them. It allows developers to just focus on the games they're making instead of whipping up trailers and, and you know, vertical slices, which, to be fair, Nintendo's always been better about, I would say, than, like, Sony, where <laughs> they don't really have a... They, I don't... When was the last time there was an obvious Nintendo vertical slice? Because every time, you know, at least early on in the Switch's life, they revealed a game, and then six months later, they showed it again, and it just across the board looked way better. Um, so I don't really know if they even try to make vertical slices there anymore. But yeah, I just think this whole notion that that Nintendo being at, not being at E3 is a bad thing, I think it's a little misguided. I get the, the surface level, oh, there's not a concentrated hype point for me to look forward to. But you saw at the end of summer. I, personally, I think two directs with a partner showcase or something smaller in the middle there is completely fine with these game-focused Nintendo Directs sprinkled in. I'm sure we will, if we don't get a big blowout or a treehouse stream for Tears of the Kingdom, we'll probably get a Tears of the Kingdom Direct in April. We'll probably get a Pikmin 4 Direct. You know, they they, they do it for these random games. You don't play 3 Kato Direct. There is still plenty to look forward to. It's just not going to be concentrated on that one day. So, I get it. That is a little unfortunate, but... It doesn't really change things. It doesn't change what we're going to see this year. It doesn't change the fact that Pikmin 4 is coming out this year and Metroid Prime 4 will probably be shown again and we'll be getting Zelda DLC later in the second half of the year, probably, right? Um, all of these things, whatever unannounced games are coming, that doesn't mean they're not going to be announced. <laughs> that just means they might be announced closer to release, which is pretty much just a good thing. But like I said, maybe it is just that content creator's perspective where having something every week makes doing this a lot more fun um and i love directs i love reacting to them but i think just having the opening of the year and ending of the year that works pretty well and just a strong summer of announcements is is pretty good so let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below are you upset that nintendo will not have a presence at e3 2023 and once again this like i said all speculative kind of just based on IGN's reporting Nintendo hasn't said one way or another whether or not they'll be at E3 um, the ESA did release a statement basically being like we're, we're working on it so it's probably not going to happen but just want to 
clarify in case it does end up happening that this was just IGN reporting what they had heard. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. You probably disagree with me. You may, maybe not. I don't know. Either way, it's fun to discuss. So yeah, <laughs> subscribe here for more Nintendo topics like this one pretty much every day. Um, and follow me on Twitter, Apple Talks Games, join my Discord, all that fun stuff. And until next time, folks, bye-bye.